Researchers here in Singapore have sequenced the complete DNA of about 5,000 Singaporeans. And with the country's three major ethnic groups, Chinese, Malay, and Indian, capturing about 80% of Asia's diversity, the scientists have created the world's largest genetic data bank of Asian populations. That's right. And more importantly, the data gives doctors a heads up on the types of diseases that Asians are predisposed to, allowing them to diagnose conditions better, find new ways to treat them, and mitigate future health care costs. Right now, there is a lack of Asian genetic data around the world. The Singapore study will be deposited in international archives for researchers everywhere to access. Our patients have unique DNA changes, and cataloging them within the genomic databases helps us to expedite the identification of the variant that's causing disease in these patients. Population level, it allows us to understand the the reason why individuals, certain individuals are at a higher risk of developing such diseases. So translating that to clinical care means we can stratify patients based on their genetic risk and then give personalized recommendations. And for more on this story, let's turn to Professor Patrick Tan. He's Executive Director of the Genome Institute of Singapore. Patrick, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Um, to get the ball rolling, tell us what this process was all about. How did this idea for a database come about? Well, this started about four years ago when investigators at the Genome Institute realized, as you say, that there was a glaring gap of Asian genetic data in public databases. And for reasons that we'll get to, the, lack, the presence of this gap would lead to health disparities. Mm -hmm. So we reached out to our partners in the three different healthcare clusters to assemble the DNA samples of all these 5,000 volunteers to perform a technique called whole genome sequencing to sequence these individuals. Mm -hmm. The resultant database is actually quite large. It's about 1.5 petabytes. So to give you a sense, it's about 350 million MP3 songs. Uh, and that's just the starting <laughs> database. So there's a lot to figure out mm. in this database. A lot of data indeed, and very important data too. You sequenced, as you mentioned there, the genetic code of 5,000 Singaporeans. What were some of the key findings that you had? So I think there were a number of key findings. Um, I will talk about the, the associations with disease later. But I think the first two findings was number one, when we analyze this compared to the current databases, we found over 100 million genetic variants that had not been previously reported, mm. reflecting the fact that these Asian genomes are severely underrepresented. Uh, the other thing that we found was this is really the first time that the Malay genomes have been comprehensively characterized. And when we compare them to the Chinese genomes, what we found was that they probably separated from Chinese and the Malays about 42,000 years ago, which in evolutionary time is a very, very short mm. span of time. So I think this shows that we are all very much Asian. We're all very much connected in deeper ways than one might be. Mm. We're all related. We are all very much related, yeah. yes. So, so the data also aims to, to help doctors, like we heard earlier, you know, better predict, to diagnose, treat diseases. Mm. Um, what did you find from the study uh, in that regard? Were there kinds of, of diseases and conditions that we as Asians are more predisposed to? Yeah. So this is a critical point that I need to explain. Um, it all boils down to the concept that before you know who is diseased, you need to know who is healthy. So to give you an analogy, if you go for glucose testing and you want to know if your glucose is high, meaning that you might have diabetes, you need to compare it to a range of what's normal. Mm. But for Asian genetics, we have lacked that database of telling us what is normal. So this database is the, that tells us the range of normality. Subsequently, doctors with patients with genetic disease can now compare their Asian patients to this database, not just in Singapore, but across the entire world in order to improve the diagnosis. This isn't just a pie in the sky. We have data from the US where African-Americans patients, because they were compared to a Western genome, were mistakenly diagnosed right. with genetic diseases mm. and in some cases actually received the wrong diagnosis inappropriate and very expensive treatment, mm -hmm. not just for themselves, but their family, their family members. So unless we have these databases, we will not be able to properly serve 
our Asian population. Yeah, establishing a benchmark, so to speak. Yeah, yeah yes. e exactly. I mean, when I think of Singapore as, as, a, as a nation, we're like a melting pot of, of Asian diversity when it comes to races, right? But this is the largest analysis of its kind in the world. Yes. What are the implications of what you've found? Well, I think that Singapore is in a unique position because, like you said, we have a melting pot of so many different ethnicities. And there's no real country in the world where all of these Asian populations are in one place. Mm. And so by being able to survey the Asian population in Singapore, we can actually comment and provide information on Asian communities in China and in India and all of the big countries. So we think that this is a major contribution uh, that Singapore can bring to the world stage as we move the DNA information into clinical care. Right. So is that the next step then, moving the, the, the information that we have, all those petabytes of them into clinical care. What's the next step for, the, for yes. this research? So this is just a start. So uh, there we, there's obviously a lot of information. In this database, we, we, we are finding patterns of uh, individuals that may be, be specific to particular diseases, for instance, beta th thalassemia, which is a mm -hmm. blood disease. We're currently going to be expanding to 10,000 probably by the end of next year. And by working with some of our stakeholders here, we'll be expanding it to 100,000, wow. which will then allow us to find the genetic patterns associated with different disease types for both clinicians as well as researchers. All right, certainly very exciting stuff. And, and the possibilities in terms of disease that management boundless. and clinical care. Boundless. Thanks very much, uh, Patrick, for coming in and, and putting that all into perspective for us. We've been speaking there with Professor Patrick Tan. He's the Executive Director of the Genome Institute of Singapore.